the solution to quiz four. Okay, so to find the natural domain, uh, we need to factor this expression. So strictly speaking, you don't need to factor the numerator, but to explain uh, a common error, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, so factoring the numerator, that's uh, x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 5. Uh, and then factoring the denominator, that would be uh, x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 1. So in this exercise, uh, we're th the answer to the question is that uh, this expression could cause a division by 0 because of either one of these factors. Uh, and the first one would be at x is 3, and the second one would be at x is negative 1. So other than that, uh, you, can <coughs> you can evaluate this expression anywhere. Therefore, the answer is, uh, you could think of it as the number line where you delete those two points. So you delete negative 1, and you delete 3, and then it could be anything else. So it says express your answer in interv interval notation, so it'll be 1, 2, 3 intervals. Negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to 3 union 3 to infinity okay now <clears throat> that's the, that's the answer now as a bit of discussion you cannot cancel uh, the x minus 3 over x minus 3. You cannot cancel the x minus 3 over x minus 3 because observe what would happen if you did. Because uh, if, if you did, you would have the expression x minus 5 over x plus 1. Uh, this expression can, can be evaluated. be evaluated at x is 3. <clears throat> so <coughs> at any rate you can't you can't use this expression to compute the natural domain for that expression because uh, you can plug uh, 3 into this one but not into that one. So part of what was being uh, tested on part A was whether or not you were going to fall into this trap. Okay, so for part B, we have two requirements. One requirement uh, from the numerator from the numerator we need that x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0 because that's an even radical. So its argument, its input, needs to be non-negative. And the denominator requirement uh, is that we have to have x not 8 because that would cause a division by 0. So we need both of these things to be true. So let's figure out how to make them both true. So uh, the first one is saying that x has to be greater than or equal to 5. And the second one is saying that x is anything but 8. So if we plot both of these, then x greater than or equal to 5 is saying that, well, 5 is OK. And so is anything more than 5. And x not equal to 8 is saying that, well, we're just going to take 8 and delete it. 
Everything except that one is okay. So in order for both of these to be true, uh, we need, uh, in a sense, where they overlap. <coughs> so the answer is 5 to 8, but not including 8, union 8 to infinity. Okay, so question 2. Okay, so find the equation of the perpendicular line. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, notably, that's the point 5, 6 right there. So that's nice that it was already plotted for us. <clears throat> and we want the line that passes through 5, 6 and is perpendicular to this one. Okay, well this slope, the slope of the line that we were given, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So delta x is 6. And uh, delta y is 1, 2, 3. Delta y is 3. So for part A, the given slope is, uh, is delta y over delta x equal to 3 over 6, which is um, <coughs> half. So the perpendicular slope is the negative reciprocal of that. So the slope that we're actually looking for is negative 2 over 1, which is to say negative 2. So then a point that the that the uh, line is going through is 5, 6. So we can use the point slope formula y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. <coughs> and now we just need to route all the bits into place. So that's going to be negative 2. And then uh, x1 <coughs> uh, and y1 will be taken from there. So x1 goes there, and the y1 goes there. So that we have y minus, well, the y coordinate is 6, is negative 2 multiplied by x minus, the x coordinate is 5. So that'd be y minus 6 is negative 2x uh, plus 10. So y is negative 2x uh, plus 16. Okay, and then part B, let's plot that. So I can, I can see that the slope is negative 2, so it would look like this. Notably, I can see uh, just by the eye that that looks pretty good. It looks uh, more or less perpendicular. <coughs> okay, and then part three. <coughs> Find a linear model. Okay, so we have two points. The two points are uh, T1, P1 equal to 1,800, uh, 10,000, and T2, P2 equal to 2,000, 90,000. So we need to find the slope. So delta t, the change in t, uh, that's the difference in the t's. t2 minus t1, which I can see is 200. 
and delta P is the difference in the P's, which is 80,000. And M is the ratio delta P over delta T, which will be 80,000 over 200, which is 400. So uh, to make sure that, I, that the rest of these things make sense, uh, this would be, the units in this uh, should be uh, persons per year. So let's think about that. Does that make sense? That would mean that there's 400 new people uh, every year over the course of 200, year, uh, 200 years. So yeah, that makes sense. Okay, good. <clears throat> so that's the slope. So now we can use the equation, uh, the point slope equation, but instead of y's and x's we have p's and t's. So this would be p minus uh, p1 is m multiplied by t minus t1. Uh, fine, so this would be p minus uh, 10,000 is 400 times t minus 18, uh, no, Eight, yeah, 1800. <coughs> okay, so then p minus 10,000 is 400 t minus 720,000. So then P is 400 T, and then now add uh, 10,000 to both sides. So that'd be minus 70, 710,000. <coughs> so let's make sure that that's reasonable. If I plug in uh, 1,800, then I should get 10,000. So 400 times uh, 1800 and then minus uh, 710,000 is 10,000, good. And then now if I plug in 2,000, I should get 90,000 and I get 90,000, so that looks good. What was the population in 1950? So this is saying find P when t is 1950, okay, so p is 400 multiplied by 1950 and then minus 710000. <coughs> so in this case, p is 70,000, and then c. <coughs> So the question is, is find t when p is 190000. Okay, so now take that equation. <coughs> so what I did on, on this one is I took this equation and I used it right here. And now I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to use it again, except instead of substituting for t, I'm going to substitute for p and get 190,000 is 400 t minus 710,000. So I'll move that to the other side. So that is saying 900,000 is 400 T. So then 900,000 over 400 is T. So that's saying that uh, 2250 is T. So what that's saying, what this is saying, is that in year 2250, 
uh, the population will be.